Greetings, everybody, wherever you may be, and welcome to Kuru, the home of Ariane, for tonight's live broadcast of Ariane Space Flight number 115-115. I'm Joshua Jample. With me is Claude Berna. Hi. Good evening, everyone around the world. Special greetings for Greenwich, El Segundo, and every people. Claude is uh, Ariane Space Mission Manager, and he'll be handling the technical commentary for the launch. Uh, the two of us with you, we hope for the next, uh, together, for the next hour, uh, roughly, down through the final moments of final countdown, through uh, liftoff and delivery of tonight's passenger. And our uh, retreat live tonight, we are in the CDA, the launch center, with the launch operation manager, Jean-Louis Leblanc. This is where we're coming to you from, however, Jupiter 2, that's the mission control building. We're about uh, 14 kilometers farther away from the launcher. Daniel Murray, mission director, that's your old job. And I am space people, and I was also mission director, as you said. You have to tell us about that a little later on when we have some time. Jacques Shrive, range operation manager from CSG. He's the DDO, the range operations manager. You'll be hearing him call out some of the uh, key milestones in the countdown tonight. This is the uh, mission control Jupiter Center. It's a nerve center here at the launch base, where all the technical people are down in the fishbowl. You can see them there, and the invited guests. So the launch window tonight will open at 1.08 a.m. We'll uh, finish at 1.48. Uh, this is 40 minutes launch window. So that's a good, that's a good uh, reasonable window? Yes, it is uh, reasonable. Uh, Paris and Washington, 2.08, 2.48, and 8.08, 8.48 for Washington, D.C. We are uh, practically on the equator here at the CSG, and we can launch in two directions, north and east. We're going east tonight, where most of the telecom satellites go. The launch uh, vehicle is a 42L. This means two liquid support boosters. These boosters are made by uh, DASA, or now it's Daimler, second stage also. The third stage is made by Aerospatial, which is also uh, architect industrial for the Ariane rocket. The vehicle equipment bay by Matra Marconi Space in France. And the fabric by the Swiss company Olicon Controvers. Tonight, the Panamsat 6B is uh, mass is 3 tons, 674 kg. And it will be positioned at 43.0 uh, west. Over Brazil. Over Brazil, yes. Right. Launcher on the pad, waiting. We're coming up on 26 minutes and counting down. The, uh, this is the launch operations team. They're doing their final checks on the 42L tonight. You can see they got their Christmas decorations up, too. They, we have our cameras up there and here in Jupiter, but there are uh, many people, over 1,000 people, 1,400, uh, working here on this 18-kilometer strip, and uh, you can't see them all. But there are weather people and safety people, and all these people send their information into us here in Jupiter, and what they send in shows up on these green status panels, giving us a go or a no-go exactly. for the launch. When it's green, of course, it's for a go. And if something happens, they have to push the red. But for tonight, everything is red, as you can see. That's why we mentioned that Jupiter here is the nerve center. The DDO will be uh, calling out the greens and the reds. Uh, and if we get some time later on, you can give us a little tour of them. So, some big legumes tonight. Mr. Ralf Jäger and Mr. Jean-Marcel Agas. Concerning uh, the international uh, affair, Mr. Paolini. We have a uh, short film coming up on Ariane Space now, the world's first space transport company, and what happens in Kourou. Versatile. Flexible. Powerful.
vidéo. Attention pour le début de la séquence synchronisée. Donc moins 7 minutes. quality in space that's a uh, rather new film I think it's only the second time that we've run it we hope you like it you can see that we're still green and we're still going Claude I wanted to ask you about uh, mission managers job uh, which you you uh, had for quite some time now here up, up in the CDL these people take care of the launcher but your job as mission director is uh, linked with the launcher as well isn't it yes you will see that the launch operation uh, manager in the CDL but uh, he is coordinating all the launch vehicle activities, but the mission director coordinates, here you see the mission director, uh, the uh, launch campaign as launch launcher, as the range, and as also the satellite operation. All right, we'll get back to that. We have uh, a short uh, campaign film on the launch campaign for Flight 15. Why don't you give us a look? The Ariane uh, 42L preparation campaign lasted 25 working days, beginning, of course, of arrival of the stages directly in the Cool Harbor. The first stage was erected on the 23rd of November and directly mated on the launch table, followed, of course, by the second stage, one day later, and the two liquid propellant boosters were mated on the main body. Then on the last day of November, the third stage was mated on top of this uh, booster, the big boosters. And the crown of the VIB, the vehicle equipment bay, also mated on top. And then all this was transferred and hauled out to the launch pad. On the 10th of December, duration is one hour, roughly. Connected to two cryogenic arms and the gantry cover the launch vehicle till this afternoon. But we will come back later on this. Right. Every, every launch vehicle has its uh, campaign. Uh, some of the Pan Am set people you can see on the, on the far Okay. Right. This is Mr. Landman from Panamsat and Mr. Phil Webin. Yeah, we'll... Tonight is the 84th uh, Ariane 4, and it's the 9th Ariane 42L configuration, not the one that's... Because there were two people that enjoyed doing the same thing in different sandboxes, so we just made a bigger sandbox. Our company had been able to expand all around the world, and we had become uh, truly global in terms of offering services anywhere, except there was a big gaping hole. Uh, we didn't cover the U.S. 
the, the reliability that our customers absolutely have to have. The fact now is that we have, we're in a great position. You have 14 satellites at the start, 21 in a couple of years. It represents um, billions of dollars worth of investment. The unlimited opportunities just got more unlimited. see any part of the world. You can hear any part of the world. There are no boundaries on the satellites. It's a case of being able to distribute to a large group of consumers without being tied to a wire. Satellites, like a radio tower lofted into space, hurtle through the heavens on missions of exploration and communication. Thrust into orbit by multi-stage rockets, the satellite travels in geosynchronous orbit at a dizzying altitude. High above the clouds, the satellite receives signals from Earth, which it then amplifies and beams back down. Where? Wherever and whenever you need them. Providing entertainment, internet access, telephony, and more throughout the world. The satellite, making science fiction, science fact. When you go up on the satellite, you have complete coverage. There are no wide areas. You cover the entire area, and not only just to the border, but beyond in neighboring countries and, and maybe even across whole continents. Hey, I think where people are going, they're going for more, more information, more entertainment, more communications, more, more, more. And how do you get access? How, how do they, wherever they are, get access to this? Where are the way? from that little spot, or spots up in the sky, looking down. Whether it's a point of sale transaction that we carry over satellite, whether it's telephony that we carry over satellite, whether it's internet services, or whether it's video, the, the key today is being able to deliver to the consumer, and satellite does that better than any other technology. The number of subscribers we're serving today via satellite is probably in the tens of thousands, and the opportunity is to serve in the millions. In Buenos Aires, you had to wait years to get a telephone line. Suddenly, with the introduction of cellular telephony, everyone had telephones. They're 30 or 40 years behind, and all of a sudden, they're right here now. They've arrived in the future and they'll build from there. When you go to get gasoline, uh, you put your card in, it's either a Chevron card or a Visa card, and that pump is authorized, and that's authorized because there's a 1.2 meter dish that's about this big sitting up on top of the Chevron station that's connected to the, to the satellite, looking at the satellite that's going back to a central point for authorization. That point of sale transaction happens because of satellite communications. Satellites are great for the internet. They allow for high-speed data. For as much as you're able to pump through, that satellite can carry it. Yeah, that was the first part of the uh, Pan Am Sat film. Uh, the second part will be coming up in just a minute. Interesting sidelight, that's uh, Daniel Biederman. Is uh, the young woman in the picture, Lourdes Luli, executive vice president, one of the original employees at Pan Am Sat. Actually, tonight's the first launch without her because she's leaving to get married after 15 years. There's President Landman giving it up for a chateau in Chamonix. Now, each satellite uh, also has its... Panamsat arrived in Kuhu on the same plane than Satmex for V114 on November 16 in an Antonov 124. Uh, pass 6B was stored in S1B building in the beginning of the operation of the preparation, then transferred in S3B building on December 1st for the filling operation. The combined operation 
with the launch vehicle item, like the adapter for the welding cylinder, began on December 15. And after the fairing closure, the composite was transferred to the launch pad on December 16. At the end of the day, the logo was on the fairing at the time, and the composite was mated on top of the third stage, waiting for tonight. The satellite range operation lasted 19 days for past 6B. Pass 6B built by Hughes, of course, the seventh international satellite the Pan Am Sat Corp has uh, given over to Ariane Space. The 23rd, I believe, built for its global fleet. Lifetime of uh, 15 years. We're going to have part two of the Pan Am Sat film coming up for you in just a moment. So just on the right of uh, Mr. Landman is Mr. Barney Bienstock from Hughes. Here's part two of the Pan Am Sat film. There's no long-term success without that commitment to service. We have been operating 24 hours a day since 1988. And there's always been someone at the phone because our customers are in 24 different time zones and they don't care if they're sitting in Jakarta. If something came up, they need some help. There is a friendly voice there that picks up the phone and says, What's the problem? How can we solve it? At the end of the day, all our customers really want is they want a reliable, dependable, and extremely efficient delivery mechanism for their services. And when we go to design the satellites, we go in and we talk to the customers and we say, if you could have the perfect satellite for this region, if it was your satellite, forget that it's Pan Am Sats, it is your satellite, how should it be designed? So suddenly, in South Africa, they have a satellite that was designed for South Africa. We've got to be the solution. The simple, easy, affordable solution. We've been able to walk down that aisle with some of the best customers in the world and into the future of global communications. And all these things that seem crazy, Jules Verne-like, a few years ago, become a reality. What makes it fun to come work here is to really understand and know what people do, your customers do, understand what their different products are, whether it's video, things you can see, whether it's data, things you can't see, but you know what the applications are. And when you are excited about the business the way we are, and you go talk to the customers, you really can help and meet their requirements the best way. And that's the whole trick, to make it real, real easy do anything you want. Okay, Panamsat, we're uh, down to the 10 minute mark and everything is green as you can see. While you're watching that picture on Panamsat, we had the last weather check at minus 10 minutes and what did they tell you over there? And the report is perfect, the uh, weather is good for tonight, there is no problem, no thunderstorm, so we'll go more. And to know more, even if the weather is good tonight, Charles, could you tell us a few words about the meteorological uh, in French Guiana? Yeah, we have a short film that's going to be coming up, and as soon as the pictures come up, I can take you through uh, what we've learned about uh, the weather service here in French Guiana. French Guiana is located at 5 degrees north and 52 degrees longitude west. The climate is very closely linked to what we call here a ZIC, Z -I -C, that's in English an intertropical convergence zone. The zone moves through the two tropics, Capricorn and Cancer, and defines the equatorial weather here. 
Cumulonimbus clouds and storms and heavy rains all develop here. And our weather station here at CSG studies the evolution of this zone for all launches. Here's an example of the systems that are tracked by our SAFIRE program with which we study the storm areas. We use color coding. Blue is for the oldest and orange is for the more recent uh, ones. We follow the weather systems and their movement very closely. Storms like this one are at their peak on average in August. This year we had six days of thunderstorms. Now, that might not seem like a lot compared to other parts of the world, but for us, it's a lot here. Our weather station is well protected from all phenomena like hurricanes in the Atlantic Basin. This is because the normal path of a hurricane lies between 15 and 20 degrees north, and French Guiana is well underneath uh, this area's latitudes. The typical path of a hurricane begins near the Cape Verde Islands off the African coast, and it moves uh, west toward the French West Indies in this intertropical zone. Then it sails uh, up towards Florida and finally dies off the coast of the U.S. in the polar streams. This is where Hurricane Mitch passed before slamming into Nicaragua and Guatemala, as you remember. In any case, we can say the overall weather picture here in French Guiana is pretty good. Okay, during your speech, we just heard that uh, Pan Am 76B enter in internal power. This means that he's on his own internal battery. And it's going to stay that way until... Uh, it can stay like this in case of uh, go back to minus six minutes, of course, the satellite will be put on external power and then again in internal power. This is normal process without any problem. So everything is green and see, now you can see the satellite uh, picture concerning the weather in French Guiana tonight and there is no problem, as I said. So we should have a nice launch. We may be able to see uh, the booster burning. Maybe certainly, able to see, certainly, yeah. certainly. Maybe we'll be able to see the third stage... Uh, Separation. Separation and ignition. I don't know. We are inside. Hmm. We'll wait and see. New picture of the CDR. And we go back in Jupiter. So in a few minutes, we will be uh, in, uh, in synchronized sequence on the launch vehicle. Mr. Yeager, who is the vice president of Syn space. Synchronized sequence is one of these uh, key milestones. You'll hear the DDO call it out, and as soon as he does that, we'll explain a little bit of what it's all about. À tous de DDO, attention pour le début de la séquence synchronisée. Top, H0-6 minutes. All right, we are in the, uh, what we call automatic sequence, which you saw began at minus six minutes. Now, what exactly is happening? The computers are taking over, is that it? The sequence is used for the very final preparation of the launch vehicle and very last checkout of everything on board and that we switch correctly the, uh, on uh, internal, uh, everything on internal of the launch vehicle and we switch to flight configuration. And this sequence is fully automatic and is controlled in parallel by two computers. So one, one computer configure the fluid, the, the other one, the electrical systems. But earlier this afternoon, by, um, let's say, T minus five hours, the gantry, the gantry was removed. The gantry is a big box covering and protecting the launch vehicle till this afternoon. And this is the first time you can see the launch vehicle totally assembled with the fairing on top and the logo with the spot that's one of the last major operations then. Exactly. Withdrawal, yeah? And after that, of course, the third stage was fueled. You can see all is green. We're on time. We're on target at uh, coming up on four minutes and 35 seconds to lift off of past 6B. Hughes and the Panamsat people. Flowered shirt is Bernie Beanstalk. Bernie Beanstalk, yes. And, and on his left is, uh, <laughs> is a souvenir on his, on his computer. Certainly. It's coming up for you is, is a shot of the uh, cryotechnic arms. We want to get an explanation of that, too. Because that's going to be the last 
image that you're going to be seeing before liftoff. Now, the cryotechnic arms, they're called here, they're the propellant feeder arms of hydrogen and oxygen going into the third stage, as uh, Claude was saying, still being see, filled. Yes, oxygen on the left and hydrogen on the right. Now, when, uh, now th these arms, which are on the launcher now, have to swing open before we can lift off the pad, correct? And this is correct. This is the first maybe point before liftoff. We must totally open this arm and block this arm position that uh, H0 is when we get the ignition and there's a sequence of events leading to liftoff which doesn't happen automatically doesn't happen immediately no right? the, mot the motors uh, were uh, of the first stage and the two boosters uh, would be ignited and that mm, plus 3.1 seconds uh, 1.5 second parameter check and analyze the pressure of the com by the computers uh, then at plus 4.1, a second point five uh, check to verify and confirm and give authorization to go. Now, the, now, now, doing the checking of the engine pressure is these computers you were talking about. That exactly the same. In, in uh, synchronized sequence, right? Mm, yes, and mm -hmm. if all uh, is go, of course, order is given to open the launch hooks holding the first stage on the table. And then this is a liftoff. Then we get liftoff. Okay, so, so we get ignition, and then we have to wait three or four seconds while the, mo the engines are burning, and they're being checked out before we can go. Exactly. Okay. So this is why we, you will see a delay between the, the first flames, let's say, and the liftoff. Right. Did you say all you wanted to say about synchronized sequence? Coming up on two minutes now. Any, any problem anywhere, uh, we go back to minus six minutes. Exactly. Right. It depends, of course, of the, of the problem I control, but for the yeah. moment everything is okay. We are minus two minutes. Is there some reason why the six-minute point is chosen? Why not eight it's, minutes? It's or only because we have to add all the different duration of all different uh, operation uh, between these two computers. All right, we're under, down to the last minute almost a minute and a half now. At minus one minute, the launcher will go on uh, its own onboard power supply. Now, does that mean that the power is passing from the ground onto to, the launcher? To the board. So the satellite is on its own. The launcher will be on its own. You hear the DDO call out the one minute mark. Last minute check. Everything is still green here for the launch of the 42L Pan Am Sat 6B. Coming up in just a minute. A tous de DDO, attention pour H0 moins une minute. Top H0 moins une minute. There's some reason why he calls out one minute and not two minutes? Only because it's the last instant, so there is nothing in particular. At minus uh, I'll be ready to go. The people at the CDL checking on their final parameters. And the customers also are checking. Yeah, all eyes are forward on the green status panels. Continue to tell the story. All is green and go. Well, I think we'll back out and we'll let you watch the final moments of the final countdown, and we'll be back with you once Arian has cleared the tower. Exactly. A tous de DDO, attention pour le décompte final. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, top. First information received now with uh, everything is nominal on board. 
trajectory is okay. You will see this later on uh, on the on the screen. We picked up the camera. Trajectory, trajectory normal. Here's the other camera. We, we, we lost the image for a moment. So the trajectory is normal. Uh, all the piloting system on board are normal. See, the, there are six points of light there. There's the four main engines, those are the Viking 5s of the inner ring, and the two boosters burning on the outside. We might get a closer look. And we will take the benefit of the very nice picture before going to the trajectory later. The first stage will burn for three and a half minutes, and then it'll be dropped in the Atlantic. The boosters will burn for about two and a half minutes. Five seconds after that, they will stop burning, and they'll be dropped in the drink, too. No part of Ariane 4 is, is reused, is that right? No. We tried to do that uh, a long time ago. It was on uh, flight uh, 14, but uh, there is no benefit for us. Everything is normal on board, says the DDO. Each of those boosters contains about 39 tons of storable propellant. They use the same propulsion system as the first stage. They have Viking 6 engines on them. First stage is now burning a couple of tons. Extinction des propulseurs d'appoint liquide. So the two saw the boosters, burn boosters, yes. And there's the and they are separated. Beautiful pictures. Yes, beautiful. Le pilotage est normal. So these two uh, strap on boosters will be back to the sea at, uh, let's say, uh, 220 kilometers from the coast. I will take a look at this curve here. On the left, you can see the cursor climbing up the nominal trajectory. On the right, you want to give us uh, an idea of what we're looking at with T and Moyen and SAV on the lower right-hand corner there? Okay, T, of <coughs> course, is the time with regard to the H0. Uh, Moyen means uh, the means to, fo to follow the launch vehicle. Of course, it's uh, uh, internal platform guidance. Uh, S is a site where we see this. For the moment, it's zero degree, but you will see this later on. Altitude, of course, 68, 69, 70 kilometer, and the speed. 2.5 km per second. So this is the uh, end of the Separation first stage un, deux, burn. Du Separation first, second stage. Okay, we are at and burning. It. It's an idea of what's going on up there. We're 84 kilometers up. The stage separation is done by a, by a pyrotechnic cord, a series of pyrotechnic cords that just cut the stage away. So the, the first stage will be uh, back to the sea, uh, let's say, 720 kilometers from the coast at an altitude of 73 kilometers. Cursor climbing up to a point where you can see sepquaf, that separation of the fairing. That'll be coming up shortly. Just to give, give you an idea of how much the weight distribution is in airing, we started out and we were roughly 370 tons, and when we dropped the first stage, we are down to about 57 tons. 57 tons, yes. So all of that contains fuel, and when it's burned, it's... Uh, and the second set will push, let's say, more than two minutes. Now the fairing separation, fairing jettisoning. The fairing can be separated now because you can see we're 120 kilometers up, so we're, I guess, out of the atmosphere. Fairing protecting the satellites, of course, like a flying clean room away from the Earth's elements. Huh? And again, 740 kg are out from the launch vehicle and be back to the sea at 1,200 kilometers from the ground. The second stage burns one nominal, like, like the boosters. In parallel, everything is nominal on the trajectory, on the piloting system and guidance system. So we're doing fine. We are rolling right along. The satellite people checking over their briefs. The pilotage is calm. So we receive information that the piloting system of the launch vehicle are very calm. Very calm. <laughs> this means that it's smooth flight. <laughs> Coming up on five kilometers a second, our speed now in the second stage. That's about half the speed necessary for satellite separation. And the third stage will get us up to about 10 kilometers per second. Mm -hmm. You can see we're approaching SEP 2-3. That's separation of the third, second and third stages. Extinction, deuxième étage. Okay. Second and stage burnout. Burnout. Separation, de trois. separation of the two stages. So now the third and the third stage will now be burned, let's say, 13 minutes, more than 30 minutes. There's a long 10 tons of cryogenic fuel in there. It's now, maybe quite 70, 17 tons. 
the ketones. Oh, yes. with, the, with the H3 plus, huh? Yes. Yeah. yeah, we're down. Remember our mass profile, we started about 370 tons at liftoff. Dropped the first stage, we were down to 57 tons. Normal. And now we're dropping the second stage, about 17 tons. The functioning of the launcher is nominal. And the, the picture showing uh, people over there was taken in the telemetry station where the immediate control, uh, visual control is done to check a few parameters, let's say 100 parameters, main and important parameters. And this gives us immediate documentation. Natal. This is immediate, yes. So now, Brazil, the session in Brazil in Natal get the launch vehicle. CSG's own radar and telemetry and telecommand stations here and in Kourou and in Cayenne are enhanced by a series of downrange stations that continuously receive uh, data on the launcher's trajectory and, and in-flight behavior. The first one just across the border in Brazil, Natal, where an agreement with the uh, Brazilian government lets, uh, lets us use these facilities. There's some additional, sont some additional ESA equipment has been installed there. And uh, Natal will track Arian for about six minutes before losing the signal, which is quite normal because there's overlapping. This is normal, yeah. Yeah. Trajectory is nominal. Pressure on board is nominal also. Third stage is going to push the launcher across the Atlantic, relatively straight due south. She'll cross the equator roughly at zero longitude. And as she approaches the coast of Africa, then we will uh, have satellite separation. Well, we have a little time now in the third stage burn. We can, we can relax. We have La about uh, normal et les sont as long as everything is normal. Shall we, um, shall we go to our quiz question? If you want. So right. we're playing games now? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Only because we have time. We, uh, at this point in the broadcast, some of you have been taking us, uh, taking the broadcast, know we like to go to a, uh, an Ariane Space quiz, and tonight, to no exception, for the end of the year, we have a wrap-up quiz for you. Question number 115, we would like to know, we, we're launching, as we told you, the uh, 11th time tonight, and 16 satellites, so what we want to know is how much tonnage has Ariane, including tonight, put into space in the launches for 1988. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. But maybe you take a minute to think about I it. I take a so. minute. Yeah. Uh, repeat the question. Ariane Space Quiz question number 115. How much tonnage and hardware satellites will we have put into space after tonight's launch with the 16 satellites? Now, normal du lanceur. We'll give you the answer in a minute. But while you're thinking, and I mean you too, Claude, because mm -hmm. this might help you. If we, if, if we look back over the year 98, we can, uh, you can mention all the satellites if Il you reste like. 10 minutes de propulsion. Ten minutes left in the third stage burn gives enough time for the quiz. Let with, me... With large marching, I would say between 30 and 50 kg. But, uh, 30 and 50 kg. Ton, well, ton, 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 ton. Let me but, look at the... Okay. Take a look at the satellites and see if you can uh, revise your answer. The year has been a big one for, for Ariane Space. It's been a banner year, like 1997, and we want to compare the two briefly. The plan for 98 was to launch 10 or 11 Ariane 4s and an Ariane 5. We did that. Uh, in 98, 11 launches, as I mentioned, including one Ariane 5, 16 satellites, six launches in the last five months. Similar thing happened last year. We had 12 launches, including an Ariane 5. We put up 17 satellites in orbit and seven launches in the last five months of the year. So for two years running, all it shows Ariane Space's uh, ability to sustain a high operational launch rate. Now, there's two more interesting things about this year. One is that despite there was a big, hole, a big hole of four months between flights 108 and 109 in April and August. We were waiting for the satellites. We were waiting for the satellites. Uh, we more than caught up uh, by the end of the year because we had four programs in a row, flights uh, 110, 11, 12, and 13 in 10 weeks. Les parameters sont nominaux. One of those in Ariane 5. The other thing interesting to mention is the month of October we launched three times, and that's a record, including the Ariane 5 launch and including uh, Ariane 4's 40th in a row. I think they had some T-shirts made for that occasion. One, two, three in a row. One, two, three in a row. Perte normal par les moyens de Kourou. All right, we've just lost uh, normal uh, happening. We've lost the signal, the telemetry signal from Kourou being tracked by Natal now. So the satellites, to get back to the question, Brazil sat in Marsat, Hotbird spot, B sat, B sat, Nile sat, ST1, pass 7, Sirius 3 and W2, IRD and Max sat for IN5, Afristar and G5, and sat Max 5. And tonight, pass 6B. So add up all those, add up all those, and see how much tonnage you get. And if you win, Claude no, Bernard will I, send I, you a check for $100. No, I know the answer now. It's 40 tons. 40? 40. 40. You're sure? Yes. 
you're right. Okay. You're roughly, roughly 40, 41 times. But you helped me. <laughs> All of you who uh, got that answer right, let Claude Berner know, and as I say, he'll send you a check for $100. So during that time, the launcher is uh, continuing his job perfectly. We're at six kilometers per second. Coming up on now. No, notice the curve. We're going. It looks like we're going down. It looks like we're decelerating. But we're sort of uh, decelerating. We speed up again. Exactly. Yeah? In a few seconds, you will see the rest of the trajectory that we're coming up. Okay. Would you like to talk about zips? I, w I want to say that the Panansat 6B uh, was designed to provide a minimum of uh, 15 years of service, but uh, by using the new Ariane inject injection strategy uh, called URS, and Oops. maybe we will uh, talk later about this, yeah. the lifetime will be extended for uh, four to five years. We will see later on. Concerning the ZIPS, we have to say ZIPS, zips. the Xenon Ion Propulsion System, is at least ten seven minutes left in the third stage burn that yeah, exactly. says. One second. We're, um, we're crawling up the curve here. You can see X H10. H10 is another word, another symbol for the third stage, and that's where you'll have third stage separation. Above that, you can see the pass separation. Go ahead. I want to say that um, uh, this uh, ZIPS uh, system is at least 10 times more efficient than the currently in use propulsion systems. Uh, they were saying that it's the propulsion system of the future. But this right? Exactly, but this means that the satellite will be uh, enabled to carry more payload on board. Par la station All right. So mm -hmm. now Africa is tracking the launch vehicle. Ascension. As uh, Ascension, sorry. Ascension, yeah, is the island out in the middle of the Atlantic, which was... Uh, a station that ESA built in 1991 when NASA was going to close its uh, support station there. And it too will track Ariane for about seven minutes. We are now at 236 kilometers up. So Xenon is, uh, they're calling the uh, propulsion system of the future, I guess, especially for yes, the planetary trip. Yes, but in fact, oh, this uh, Xenon system is used primarily normal, for spacecraft station keeping and uh, it will use very small trust to correct uh, uh, some, uh, let's say, repositioning of the satellite. So it's, it's uh, used to, um, to steer a satellite that's already orbiting. You can't launch with Xenon. No, we will use the, the, main, the main engine. Okay, so, so we, have, we have four motors on, uh, four Apogee motors on, on Pass 6B that are... We are Xenon. four using Xenon. Okay. We're about halfway through the third stage burn and everything is flowing normally. We are at 200 kilometers, so 19 kilometers up, and 7 kilometers per second. Les paramètres lanceurs sont normaux. And everything's fine on board. Maybe just before the, the end of thrust of the third stage, it's time to talk about the optimized use of the static 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 holes are reserved, and this is designed to give satellites the option of benefiting from higher launcher performance. Par la de Natal. And this is based on the partial conception of the propellant reserve of the H10 stage. So this is we're using some of the reserve, reserve fuel in the launcher. Exactly. We can also and use some reserve in the satellite, but that's another... That, this is another thing, story. Yeah. And this is the second time we will use it. The first time was the was previous launch. It, yes, two weeks ago. Now, is, is, if, uh, why, why are this something that we're starting to do now? We're going to do this all the time? This is two launches in a row? Or is there some special specification the satellites have to be built especially for this? Or? Uh, the, the whole system uh, using on the 42L with only one satellite on board is exact, the perfect configuration for this. 42L. So 42L. When you a single launch, it, it's, yeah. it's good, of course. Not double launch. No, not double launch. So we are. La trajectoire est normale et le fonctionnement du lanceur est nominal. So everything is on board. Everything is fine. Trajectory, propulsion, and everything. Eight kilometers per second, and the speed to inject a satellite is uh, 10 kilometers per second, roughly. So we're getting up there slowly but surely. Il reste un peu plus de trois minutes de propulsion. Three more minutes of uh, gas in the uh, third stage. This um, Panamsat the world's first private international communications satellite operator. They've been in orbit since 1988. 
the same as uh, Ariane 4. As a matter of fact, they went up on Flight 22, which was the very first Ariane 4 in June of 88. That was past one. And uh, Ariane has launched a lot of the fleet. The fleet now is, I think, 17 satellites, if I'm not mistaken, on five continents. PASS-2 was launched by Ariane in uh, July 94 for the Pacific Rim in the U.S., Flight 65. 3R went up in January 96, Flight 82 for serving the Atlantic and Africa for the first time. PASS-4 and PASS-7 went up over the Indian Ocean, PASS-4 Flight 76, PASS-7 Flight 110 just uh, two, three months ago. PASS-6... Le du lanceur est toujours nominal. Pass 6, Flight 98 in August of last year, a DTH for Latin America. Tonight's is the, I think we mentioned, the 13th satellite that Panamsat has entrusted to Arian. And friend Landman, president, says that he looks forward to seeing My Dog Spot. That's the famous logo that belonged to the founder, uh, René Anselmo. Looks forward to seeing My Dog Spot logo on Arian rockets well into the 21st century. So more than 1,000 seconds now from the, the launch. And the speed is 8.8 .8 kilometers per second. Il reste une minute et demie de propulsion. One more minute of propulsion. We did, did want to mention uh, for, for the Hughes people, this is a milestone as well, because uh, they were chosen to build the satellite in March of 98 and uh, delivered it in a year, representing a record for them, we were told by Bernie Beanstalk, because uh, their usual normal time for satellite building is between 15 and 18 months. So congratulations to them. So we are close. Il reste propulsion. One more minute. Another minute of propulsion in the third stage. And speed is increasing, 9.3. So, so here's, here's this curve that we mentioned before. We went up and then we slacked off a bit and now, now we're coming back up to speed. Is there some reason for that? Acquisition du lanceur par la station okay, de Libreville. Okay, to take more speed and now Africa is tracking the launch vehicle. This is the final uh, tracking station downrange in Gabon on the west coast of Africa at Libreville where there's an ISA installation uh, since 1987 and she'll track the launcher for about 15 minutes longer than the others coming up on separation on extinction of the third stage pardon me extinction du troisième étage here we are okay here we are burnout. so now the third stage will use what you call its, its own de la manoeuvre d'orientation du composite. Yeah, now, now we start to and control system. Right. There are certain things we have to do before we separate the satellite. Exactly. So you're going to tell us what they are. In fact, we are the third stage will position exactly at the good position we want and at the good speed and at the good, let's say, spin the, sa the satellite. The, the so the satellite will be spin, will be spin at, let's say, uh, one, two, one uh, two per, per minute. It's still connected to the satellite. Of course. Par la of course. Be because of course. normally you have extinction of the second stage and they drop it, but now this, is, uh, this one is still connected. No, no, it's okay. It's still connected. So tell us about these maneuvers now. Why do we have to spin up and spin down and to position perfectly the satellite before separation from the third stage? So of course this is done by the onboard computer. Okay, just a, a final note on our mass profile. You remembered when we uh, began, we were at 370 tons, 57 tons after the first stage was jettisoned, 17 tons after the second stage. La manoeuvre d'orientation du composite se poursuit normalement. And now with the, uh, after the third stage burnout, we're down to five tons. And how much of that is weight? We have 3.6 tons, I think, is, uh, is, is a satellite weight. 3.6 for T. So, so if, if we start off with 370 tons, we put in orbit three tons, that's a, a, a yield of 1%. Exactly. Nobody's found a better... De la manoeuvre d'orientation du composite. Okay, we are now very close. Of course, the third stage is spinning up just before separation, on the good orientation, asked and requested by the customer. Mise en rotation du composite. So again, the spin is done. Separation Panamsat 6B. And Panamsat is separated. Perfect.
And now watch, uh, watch Phil Rubin because he's going to take off his uh, outer shirt and he has a special message on his t-shirt that he has every time. Spot here, but Spot here, but where's? And you know where Lou Lily is. Lily. Lily, we mentioned, has left uh, the company because she's going to get married. So we hope that uh, she's got the message. This is something that Phil does for every launch. He has a special one-of-a-kind t-shirt made and never tells anybody what's going to be on it. So it's always a big surprise. So we're waiting for the, uh, the uh, declarations. We'll have Ralph Yeager, Arian Space VP, make a, sp make a, a short speech, and Fred Landman, uh, past president, Pan Amsat's president. You see him on the phone there. Both of those gentlemen will be up. Before we get to them, let's just give a brief rundown of what's going to happen uh, now that the satellite is up. First acquisition at Sydney an hour after launch, so in about, what, 40 minutes, I would say. Mm -hmm. uh, then there's uh, five Apogee Lamburns, three main ones, I'm told, between the 21st today and New Year's Day. This is clear. Deployments of various kinds from uh, January 2nd to January 4th. The testing from the 5th to the 17th of January. The ZIPS testing, which Claude was telling us all about, takes a little longer from the 18th to the 29th of January. I wonder why that's, that, that's so long. Maybe we'll get some, some news from them later. Drifting to its spot between the 30th of January and the 10th of February, an official handover from Hughes on the 11th of February, and we're told that service will begin soon after. Fin de mission lanceur. We got a replay coming up for you, maybe two, so you can relive these... Uh, those fine moments, the fine pictures the of final. the launch. Six, this is a replay. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, top. Decollage. Decollage. So you saw those fine pictures. It was a little cloudy today, so we were wondering if we were going to get a nice, uh, nice uh, visuals at the liftoff, but we sure did. You can see uh, the smiles and the happy faces uh, here in Mission Control. You can see Daniel Biederman with a cigar, I think. There they are, the traditional cigars being handed out. I think I saw Fred Landon with a cigar earlier. I suppose that cigar is aficionado. I want, want to check the first uh, information from the satellite, but the hang off. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that news should be coming in from Perth, uh, the first acquisition, as you mentioned, about 20 minutes. We're waiting for the uh, speeches from Ariane Space Ralph Yeager and Pan Am Sats Fred Landman. And uh, the microphones are being readied. And look, and look at... Pilotage normal. That's our second replay. That one was, I think, from Toucan, which was a lot closer to the launch pad. Some very fine shots. While we're waiting for um, the mics to be readied and waiting for uh, Ralph Yeager and Fred Landman to move and out into the hall... Maybe now we have a quiz question for you, Joss. In a few seconds, you will see. Uh-oh. Well, there's smiles all around here. The champagne, I'm sure, will be forthcoming. Christmas is always a festive time here in Kourou because uh, Arian's very first launch in 1979 was Christmas Eve, so we celebrate doubly. There's my dog Spot in a spacesuit doing an EVA.
another launch replay, some fine shots. Here come the two gentlemen who will be making some speeches. Ralph Yeager making his way to the microphone. He will speak first, and then we'll hear from Pan Am Sats Fred Lundman. Right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm glad to tell you that flight 115 is over. It's been a success. We've finished with, uh, the trajectory, which is absolutely correct. So you see, this is very good to end 1998. We've finished uh, launch number 11. We've put into orbit 14 satellites. And Today was 42nd, the 42nd flight, which was a success, and therefore this is a major record. It's exceptional. It really shows that we completely master technology. Europe masters the cryogenic uh, technology and the launch vehicle technology. I'm personally really glad we've really shown uh, the way for space transport, which is reliable, on time, flexible. And I would like to thank all the teams, all the teams that have been wonderful, they've been working hard this year, they've suffered, they've worked extremely hard, they've been successful, they've been able to uh, meet all the challenges, all the challenges that were like a burden on their shoulders. As you know, we've had some difficulties with some spacecraft with the customers and Everything went on smoothly, and what I do hope is that team spirit and success will go hand in hand for us in 1999. On behalf of the corporate management of Ariane Espace, I would like to thank you all from the bottom of our heart, here in Kourou, in Evry, in the different factories, I would like to thank you since you are the ones who really re represent the value, the worth of this program. Of course, we have a wonderful Ariane launch vehicle, but at the end of the day, you, I mean the teams, you are the ones who've helped us gain these successes. Thank you. Thank you very much, Fred. Thank you, Pan Amstad, for your good business. You are one of the most... Uh, reliable customers thank you for your good business you have been here twice this year each time was a great success and it therefore uh, achieves a kind of anniversary this is uh, the 10th anniversary of our business uh, between Ariane Spass and Panamsat and he has come back twice this year for doing that and now we wait for him about three times next year so I think the uh, perspectives are good for all of us. We wish a good continuation of the voyage of the satellite to the satellite teams because their work now starts, ours is finished. And uh, we wish long life to the satellite and a very long and useful life to the satellite in the hands of Panamsat and the hands of Sky uh, Latin America. Fred, maybe you would like to say a few words. Thank you. As Ralph has pointed out, this is our second time he here. It's our 13th or 14th launch with Ariane Spas. But for me, who and I've been to to most of them, there is always a little excitement, and it brings out the sort of child in us when we uh, when I go to a launch. We get the nervousness down there and the excitement. And how appropriate that this is just four days before Christmas, because I can think of no better Christmas present under the tree this year than a successful launch of the satellite for, for the people at Pan Am Sat, for the people at Sky Latin America who will use this satellite for their service. So for, for those at Pan Am Sat who, whose Christmas came four days early this year, I want to thank you at Ariane Spas and, and your entire team both here and in Evray for, uh, again, another wonderful ride. So thank you again, Ralph, and, and your team. Well, thank you, Fred. And this is my first question for you now and for all you people watching the TV, who is Santa Claus? We have a little, have a little gift for you. <laughs> Look at the gift. Well, we thought uh, you might like some. Like, like some oh, there he is. You can spread this in the This is what 
He looks just like McKelly. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so to give you an indication, right. Santa Claus, you can call it eh Babo Natal. Right, ladies and gentlemen. Maybe I will meet you again long for uh, Arab next Sat, uh, long. Uh, we'll, we'll launch Arabsat and Skynet on the 3rd of February. Yeah, we might meet uh, by then, meet again, but uh, I'd like here again to thank you and thank all the teams who worked extremely hard. And I wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year in peace and an excellent year for 1999, which is going to be a good year, but it's going to be hard as usual. Thank you. I'm Ralph Yeager, thanking the teams for uh, mastery of technology, showing the way for reliable space transport, and uh, Fred uh, getting his early Christmas present. You want to say something about some new contracts? I just want to add something, of course. Uh, Iron Space signed uh, the, his 12th and 13th contract of the year. The tout à fait. Uh, that's a strong sign for all the, uh, the teams, the people who have been working really hard, extremely hard, since the beginning of the year to meet this challenge. Apart from these 11 launches, uh, we had already had uh, 11 and 12 the previous years, the years before. But you see, we've been able to speed up at the end of the year with five launches that uh, took place since uh, October 3, launches in October 2 in, in December, as I told you before. So you see, all these are successes that are wonderful for all of us and for Guyana as well. And, um, you know, I welcome Bernard Lama and others uh, before. And in October, we launched uh, three times, as I told you. And at the end of October, we had a T-shirt which uh, was in line with the World Cup, you know, with uh, uh, the one, two, three we have. And we followed uh, the, 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 the final here in Jupiter, in Jupiter, and that was a marvelous uh, event for us with the victory of France against Brazil with one, two, three, you see here. And... Uh, uh, together with my team, I wanted to keep two T-shirts for Bernard Lemar because we thought he'd be with us one of these days. So, uh, Bernard, this is a T-shirt for you. You've deserved it. Claude, before we wrap things up, you want to uh, finish with your announcements? I want to finish, yes. So the 12th uh, contract sign was for Meteosat second generation for 2002. And end of last week, uh, Iron Space signed uh, for, uh, to launch Global Star, six Global Star satellites uh, for the constellation. So that makes and how many contracts in the year? Uh, so this is 13 contracts in the year. <laughs> Very good record. Like we said, a banner year for Iron Space with uh, 16 satellites and all these contracts and wrapping up the year in fine form with the launch tonight of Anamsat 6B. Tonight's launch, the 115th Ariane, the 84th Ariane 4, and 152 satellites.